Keep 100% of your claim. G4 Claims. If you've been hurt in a road accident that wasn't your fault, you should really talk to G4 Claims first. Unlike road accident solicitors, we don't charge you for our services, which could see you better off. To keep 100% of your compensation, have a chat with Nicole and the team. You'll be glad you did. Search online for G4 Claims. Keep 100% of your claim. G4 Claims. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Selic the Thunder podcast and we've finally made it episode number 118. Hooray. Uh, last week we joked that episode 118 was going to be just me, then an hour long monologue and we were close to it. I bought her off it. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, there's only two years today. We were meant to expand the Selic the Thunder and if, if, if anything, we'll have, what's the opposite of expand? The, the, the downsized. <laughs> downsized as no, a podcast. I mean, just had not started sacking people. <laughs> <laughs> Callum Craig is gone. He's no what not. He's not actually. Um, the arm has not been amputated. The man is very much alive. He just couldn't make it on today's show because he's working late. We have also selected one of potentially two new members of our podcast um, who can't start till next week. So, it's us two. Not a great start, boys. Not a great <laughs> <laughs> uh, Words will be getting dealt. Um, no, uh, it's me and Kieran this week for the first time. Actually. And I was going to say, I don't think I've all been on a two person. Two person show. I've done it with McGinley a couple mm-hmm. of times. Aye. Went done well enough. Um, so hopefully, me and Kieran can provide camaraderie, some charm, some conversation, <laughs> some wit. Some wit. Um, and, and hopefully you enjoy it. Welcome into the episode. Also, welcome to Thunder Club members. You'll have your Thunder Club bonuses. Remember, if you're not part of the Thunder Club, you can join down below. The first episode was a hoot. You can't, you've no, you, you're no, you don't know what it was like. I, I'm it's not paying for that. <laughs> <laughs> Kieran's not a member of the club, but he is like a runner of said club. So it, it was a good first episode, though. I enjoyed it. Um, on that note, with me today, Kieran Old, Kieran, how are you? Yeah, I know, but I had pretty good after after last night's oh, result, right. to be fair, but maybe a wee bit worse for wear this morning after <laughs> last night, but all worth it, especially when you're walking away with a 5-1 winning the Champions League. I, I, I didn't drink yesterday or last night, and I thought that I was going to have to try and convince people on the podcast uh, or on the channel that I wasn't, because I was I felt like I was pissed in my match reaction. <laughs> drunk of the vibes. Drunk of vibes, drunk of sh- euphoria of, of winning 5-1 in the Champions League. But... Um, yeah, we went out for a couple of drinks before the game, and we will get into talking about the game, obviously, but we went out, me, you, a couple of other lads uh, sitting talking about the game, and we were all fairly optimistic. We all understood that this was a very winnable game for Celtic. Maybe not quite as winnable as what Celtic made it, but yesterday was all the makings of what a Champions League sh- game should be, Kieran, wasn't it? It was just, it was nice. It, it was a nice feeling. It's something that we're no used to, obviously. You said to me yesterday... In your entire time doing the channel, you've got to go in and speak about, what was it, that the third ever? That's the third, t- I didn't even bring this up yesterday. Did you know? No, I forgot to, it slipped my mind. The third, I've done YouTube now eight or nine seasons. Third time I've got to discuss a Champions League win. That's pretty shocking. That's but hopefully, hopefully there's more to follow this, uh, this season. It's the first time that we've ever won an opening game. Mm-hmm. In, that, in 13 or 10. 13, aye. Nuts. And that, that is wild, but... I mean, it's hopefully shown we're moving in the right direction. As we spoke about, it's a game that it was winnable and it was it was a must win, obviously, but mm-hmm. it was a team we should have been beaten, but I don't think anybody was really expecting by that score line. Blew them, after the, blew them at the water, sorry. And it's exactly what you want to kick off your Champions League campaign. It's, it is the, the perfect start and we've still we've got some tough games on the, the near horizon, but... It, it gives you that confidence. It, obviously, it's different. You're going for playing Slovan Bratislava from Slovakia to then Borussia, Borussia Dortmund, Dortmund last year's finalist, so mm. runners up. So is that is that that will probably be the game that kind of grounds up? Mm-hmm. But I don't even want. I don't want to be negative and no, say it'll you, you've up. got like the it'll, sort of positivity yeah. for last night. Aye. You want to be keep that optimism until was it the first of October we played yes, them? Yes. So hopefully we can continue in the form we're in 
And Aye. I mean, it, it's it's obviously really early to start previewing the Dortmund game. Mm-hmm. We've not even started talking about the game last night, but uh, people on both sides of the Glasgow divide have already been commenting on the quality of the opposition. I'm sure, by the way, in the Thunder Club, I'm sure we'll be very, very... Honest about That's that. what you're paying your money for, boys. <laughs> <laughs> but we will come out of that in this episode. But maybe the Dortmund game will be a better measuring stick, at mm, least, to see where right. we actually are as a team. Because if we go to Dortmund and we compete, then, well, there's even more to be excited mm. about. But we'll see. I know, because uh, we respect to Bratislava. Yeah. It's a team you'd expect to be playing in the qualifiers for yeah. this mm-hmm. competition. That's what we're saying with the whole... Obviously... Talking about the weather and that, the way you got into that game last night, it that was a like qualifier, it was, uh, man. It was like uh, <laughs> before this, <laughs> the main thing. So, but no, nah, it was a good night all round, especially for a certain few players that we'll, I'd imagine we'll come yeah. to talk about. Yeah, but. we'll get on to the performance and such, but I did want to, you know, that's why I wanted to talk about just the feeling of the night itself because, you know, the atmosphere was brilliant, the weather was magnificent. It was just, mm. I mean, it's nice today as uh, well, but yesterday was really nice. Um, I don't get used to it. <laughs> I know, I know, we could go to a game in shorts, it never happens. Um, the, the atmosphere was great, the weather was great, the performance was great. It's just everything that, I think it's just, a game that we'll look back on in, in five, ten years' time going, it was the real culmination of like a year-long effort of Brendan Rodgers trying to bring this team together. We heard Joe Hart last night actually give a, a, a cracking analysis of, of Brendan Rodgers' season, his first season back, and he was saying how you know the first few months were difficult, and, and even Joe Hart wondered where it was maybe going, and then there was just a moment where it clicked. Mm-hmm. And I think Last night, Kieran, was, was even more an example of that. I think so, because, I mean, Hart spoke about Rodgers putting the stamp on his team. You could see that last night, the yeah. way we were playing. At times, obviously, we were struggling to break them down the, the initial opening stages of the game, but then after after you, you got the first, it was, you seen what way the game was heading, mm. and that second half was just... Unreal. I mean, uh, granted, I was not expecting Vimmer to. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say roll back the years, wasn't <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> was Did he do that years ago? <laughs> but, like, uh, apart from that absolute freak goal, uh, like, yeah. you, you cannot fault anything. And that's exactly what you want against a team of that calibre to go out and put in the performance we did. And hopefully, as we spoke about, we've got other measuring sticks, was the term you used. Hopefully it gives us the confidence to go forward, but very encouraging signs. It is, and I think that's like, you know, people will, and we've already seen that, as I mentioned, we've, we kind of kind of alluded to it, we can, we can comment on it here. You know, we've seen so many people coming out, crawling out of the woodwork, commenting, or, you know, Hibs could beat that. T- Some people saying, you know, the team costs less to put together than Hibs. Uh, you know, Rafe Rovers could beat this team. All these quotes from, from Rangers supporters. Well, you know, one team made it through qualifiers, and it certainly wasn't Rangers, it was Slovan Bratislava. Mm. They have every right to be in this competition, and do you know what? If we're going to give trophies away this season, well, there's, Rangers still have the trophy for the worst side I've seen at Park Ed. Still, mm. still, still worse than Slovan Bratislava, if you want to get all oh, Rangers da or Selic da on, on this show. Um, but what I will say is, people are bringing out that whole, you know, it's only Slovan, but you can only beat, What's in front mm-hmm. of you here? That's, that's it. They're in the competition because they earned it, because they're the champions of the respective nation. So Celtic went out and done, yeah, it might be what you expect. It might be the bare minimum. They still had to do it. And it's still very encouraging because, listen, in years gone by, would Celtic have won that game 5-1? Probably not. See, that's what I was thinking. I'm, like, just happened back to last season, but about this game, we talked about the first time winning the opening game, Jink. The confidence was maybe taken for beating Feyenoord last year. It was a dead rubber game, but mm-hmm. we finally got the monkey off our back yeah, yeah. 10 years since our last Champions League group stage win at Celtic Park. So hopefully that sort of kicked us on for that. But about other stuff where people coming out the woodwork talking about oh, the, oh, the quality of last night's man. opposition. You, what are we meant to do about that? Like, <laughs> it's the draw. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, we, we just so happened to get a favourable draw this yep. year and... I'm glad that in previous years I've seen us get draws that I thought, right, that's not like pure group of death in the old format, mm-hmm. but we still... They, these were the kind of games I used to feel a bit more because you you had the expectation was on you. You've yeah. seen games like this against, obviously, better teams, but like Anderlecht and, for some reason, Gladbach, everybody thought we should have been <laughs> hammering. But, <laughs> but it's true because like, they, they, you can, they can be banana peeled. I, th- I think the weight of expectation in the past is sort of 
hindered Celtic because Aye. I feel like in the Champions League it was always the, the nights you remember, the famous nights were when we were the underdog, but as soon as the roles are reversed, previously we were never comfortable with being the team that should be gone and winning. Mm-hmm. And to see the odds yesterday, somebody put on Twitter and I was like, that's bang on. It's like the odds gone into the game. It's like, it's as if we were playing Ross County or something mm-hmm. at Celtic Park. We were 1-4 to it's win nice. that game and they were upwards of 12-1 to to, to to win. I was like, ah. Christy put on a ten pound insurance bet <laughs> to try and save the night if we get beat. But, but you know, and, that, and it's just it's all so frustrating because Celtic can't do anything about the draw. Celtic have been, and I'm, I'm listen, good. I wanted the easy mm-hmm. team. So Rangers fans are fans of other teams, and I, I say fans of all teams. It's, it is only Rangers fans. Yeah. I didn't see any Hibs fans on Twitter last night giving it fucking. Oh, we'd beat him. <laughs> you know, it's, it's only Rangers fans. It's jealousy. It's this. It's the usual. You know, and it's not every Rangers fan. It's just that vocal. My, minority on on social media um but to, to act like that is unbelievable because this is the same you know they've got to go and play malmo next week and you know that's malmo are, are, are worse than slova and bratislava by all regards you know like th- this is there's a reason that they're in europa and champions mm-hmm. league so where where, do, where does that conversation start and end it's just pointless celtic mm-hmm. won their game we're happy we got two million quid into the bargain for winning the game things are brilliant at park kid i want to change it for the world one of my favourite ones I seen yesterday it was like, yeah, that mob must be shite getting beat three and a half that muck. <laughs> and somebody just went and posted like, like when it was three now, and somebody just went and posted the screenshot of us beating them three now. What's that make use? Then? I know because it, it's just shooting yourself in the foot, really. Anyway, we'll t- probably talk a lot about that uh, kind of conversation and go through some of the t- best tweets on on the Thunder Club. Let's talk about the game. Um, it, we've got to go through a, a few of the performers. On that note, before we do. Uh, Kieran, you've been you've been getting a lot of credit for your time telling skills. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even mind what time we started. That. <laughs> He's no done it this week. He's um, it. It's got eleven minutes. He's gone eleven. He's gone eleven. Uh, I'm probably probably way off of that one. Uh, but. But is it as impressive this week? I don't know. Time will tell. Time will tell. <laughs> hey, time will tell. Um, so we'll we'll kind of try and dance through the game in the next sort of ten minutes. First half, we got the goal to, to put us in the lead. There was a couple of things that were irritating about it, but mostly in the whole it was good. Kyogo with a couple of big misses, though. Mm-hmm. And, and you're thinking to yourself at half time, you know, I, we did take our feet off the gas a little bit, mm-hmm. I think, towards the end. But the most frustrating thing about that first half, Kieran, was that instead of 1 0, it should have and could have been 3. I, it genuinely could have been 3, and that's, I feel like that must have been the talking point around the stadium at half time. Like, we're playing well, but we should be up because. The, the thing where it was the first chance Kyogo had, and he does all the hard work. It does to, the hardest it, part. Like, I mean, it's a ma- like the boss pinged into him at some yep. pace. He's he's done the hard part of bringing it down, and then it's straight at the the keeper. I understand it's a hard thing to do. You're under time constraints, but I was like, Jesus Christ. Like, yeah. I've seen him score harder ones than that. Exactly. That's the, that's the frustrating thing about Kyogo, and I think we've seen it this season. You know, he's, 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 he's only scored the one. Against Rangers, is that his only goal so far? Um, Has he scored another? I genuinely don't know. I, I, I feel like he might have, but but there's so many times he does the hard work or he scores the hard chances, and then it was the same. His whole Celtic career has been the same. Mm-hmm. Missing chances from inside the six-yard box or whatnot. Like, I don't know what it is, but it's just so frustrating, especially on a European stage. It makes up for it because mm-hmm. he gets his goal uh, later in the game, but, I mean, you're just thinking at half-time, not knowing the eventual result, like... Mm-hmm. This isn't going to be one of these days, is it? Uh, see, we talk about needing to be clinical. Obviously, last night we were clinical across the board, but in some of the, the games against, say, your Borussia Dortmunds, chances might only oh, fall aye. to Kyogo. Aye. It's not like last night where we are dominating the game. We're on top, controlling possession, umpteen shots for all other pitch. Yep. In the bigger games against the bigger teams, you might only get a handful of chances, and yep. likelihood is most of them will be coming through the striker. Aye. So you need them to be a bit more clinical. His conversion rate was like me in player career. <laughs> <laughs> Still at Portsmouth, I. Oh, aye. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm getting, signing off FC 24 in style. <laughs> <laughs> Fran Park. Aye, but th- that was the only frustrating thing for me about the first half. We did get our lead through a, a bullet header of William Scales, who mm-hmm. is talk of the town. And listen, we may as well spend a, wee, a, a few minutes on Liam because, he, listen, if we're quick to dish it out with the criticism, I suppose you've got to be quick to dish mm-hmm. it out with the praise. He was man of the match last night, had a solid performance at the back. His goal obviously inspired Celtic to go on to, to the win. I mean, I, I, it's like 
a new player so far this season, isn't it? I think that the signing of Austin Trusty is like a fire under his backside um, because he, he looks undroppable at the minute. And, and last night just adds to that. See, I think it's the case. Like we've spoke about, obviously, when Trusty's coming in, we're thinking, right, he, maybe he's going to be the one to take the yeah. take the reins now. But it's always good to have competition for, for places. You've seen it happen so many times at Celtic. We've signed somebody thinking, right, they're definitely going to be the player that comes in. You can go as far back as, like, Paddy Robertson, yeah. like James Forrest, like Dan Unreal. So it, it's good to have that competition and, you know, the both of them are vying the hardest to try and get that starting spot. But you actually can't fault Liam Scales. And I've been, I'd like to say, I've been a pretty harsh critic of Liam Scales. I think everybody in this podcast mm-hmm. has been. But it, it blows hot and cold and it goes through purple patches, but he's been, you can't really fault him this season yeah. at all. And last night, he, he was unreal and people were saying he was playing better than Carter Vickers recently and you can't I mean, that's, I mean not even both a, that's not even a dig. No, 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 no. I mean, like both of them have been pretty mm-hmm. good. But I mean, I think that if you were, if you had a gun in my head and you had mm-hmm. to ask who's been the better so far, it would be scary. Mm-hmm. But yeah, once again, we've, we've conceded two goals in all competitions this year, including obviously the five straight clean sheets in the league. Um, last night, we were really unlucky to concede. I think that you could see the frustration in Casper Schmeichel, but Scales can't be faulted for that. He's just really enjoying his form at the minute. But you, you've... You've just got to hope he holds on to it, don't you? Because mm-hmm. it was the same way he started the season uh, brilliantly last year and then things quickly took a bit of a, a dip. Do you think it'll be different this time round? I think he's obviously maturing as a, a player. Mm-hmm. I think he's getting this experience. I mean, he had the full Champions League campaign last year. This isn't his first go at the the tournament yeah. anymore, so he, he's used to it. And Obviously, every team's a different challenge and you're coming up against some of the best players in the world, so... I mean, it's it's only going to improve him, and I, I really hope it is because even people might say, "Oh, you've been fucking slagging him off for the past year." <laughs> we have. <laughs> I've always, my, my, my thing for any time I've criticised a player is like, just prove, prove me, me wrong. wrong. Like, that, I would much rather see a player prove me wrong and and, and perform well yeah, than be right. Then, yeah, mm-hmm. of course, a hundred percent, and I, that's happened. You know, over the course I've done this channel since twenty sixteen now, and there's been. Players, James Forrest, I've given it stinking at times. Mm-hmm. Scales, stinking at times. Bayata, I gave it stinking at times. But he was a good performer mm-hmm. on occasions. You know, I'd much rather see them prove me wrong. And, and people will go, oh, you were wrong about them. And I'm, I don't see why it's a pure like, win. Mm-hmm. I'm like, good. I'm glad no. I was wrong about them. You don't want any player to... Of course, I want every player to succeed. Celtic, so... Uh, aye. And then um, it gets a goal. I mean, this is the thing I was going to ask you. If you take yourself back to, say, July 2023... If we were doing a podcast, and most likely it would be McGinley because he loves a wee outrageous claim, right? But if one of us was to turn around and to July 2023 and say, by September 2024, Liam Scales will have two Champions League Player of the Match awards on his shelf, you'd have pissed your pants. I'd have, have flew for whoever said that. <laughs> <laughs> With fists of fury, man. <laughs> like you would have pissed your fucking pants. It's a testament to him and how far he's mm-hmm. come. It really is. I know. Because he's a player that I, I'd at times I've thought, right, he's the obvious, in my head, he was the obvious weak link in the team, and if you want to level up as a club, I've probably said that as recently as a couple of weeks ago, Aye. that we need to level up on him, but he must be heeding my words and walking <laughs> extra hard and that. If he <laughs> that does listen pitch. to the podcast, like... I'm very sorry, Liam, if you do. <laughs> <laughs> if he does listen to the podcast, listen, it's tough love, you know? And mm-hmm. you, that's The ones you like the most, you give tough love. You tend to find that in football. It's like, you know, like Ronaldo always talk about how fucking harsh Ferguson was on him and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, tough love. We love you, Liam. Um, but he was great. He's getting a lot of plaudits. Um, second half, we, we were, a t- a, it's weird to say, but a totally different team. You've already mm-hmm. touched that. We just came to life. Uh, where do you begin? I, I, I generally don't know. I just, and I'd love to have been a fly on the wall in the dressing room at halftime to see mm-hmm. what was said because it came out with the fire in the belly and this is paradise for you yeah. I know he must have been up all night the night before <laughs> that, right? if we're only one up at half time <laughs> <laughs> inspired by the what was it who was it was it Celtic Bart was it like the homeless world cup champions mm, uh, he's used, he's definitely used them so, uh, somebody that's getting a lot of praise from last night uh, and we'll get through the individual scorers and, and I'll let you kind of uh, talk about anybody you want to but somebody who's getting a lot of the headlines on social media is Arna Angles mm-hmm. who was once again really good. Played the entire game, which you know I was I was I was convinced he would be the one to maybe get taken mm-hmm. off, but he wasn't. It was Hattie. I think it already shows the stake of what an eleven million pound player really does mean. Like this is the guy now, mm-hmm. and and last night he played like the guy. 
I mean, the penalty alone, I mean, uh, w- the whole performance, but the oh. penalty, we, we've we always joked about how we can't take penalties <laughs> and that, and I don't want to jinx the man <laughs> because it's only too deep. We've, we've been here before, but mm. cool, calm, composed, y- you can't ask for much more than... I, I did have a wee sneaky feeling uh, we were going to get a penalty last night because I thought we're going to control possession. Somebody's going to make an Aye. error. The way that how the speed we play it, somebody's going to. But he stepped up big time and his his overall performance. He just looks composed on the park. He looks like he belongs at that level. Yep. And as you said about spending the eleven million pound, this is what we've been harping on about for years. When you sell a player for top money, you use money so that yeah, I understand O'Reilly came in for cheapest chips and we. It, we have done a scout, but if you want somebody to come in the way Engels has you, and just hit the ground running, you can see the quality there. You need to pay the money for it, and Aye. hopefully, this is the sort of transfer that we've done that's going to be maybe be the catalyst to kick on in the transfer you, market. You took the next question away from me because I was going to ask. This can only be good for Celtic mm-hmm. in the sense that surely Peter Law, while De- Desmond are watching these games and going. So that's what a difference an eleven million pound mm-hmm. signing can make, and hopefully that spurs us on to make more and more and more of them as we bank mm-hmm. hundreds of millions. Hopefully over the next few years. Mm-hmm. I know it, it seems daft to, that we even need to sit and say, "Oh, like, something that seems so glaringly obvious <laughs> is if you spend the, the bigger money, the, the, there's a higher chance it's going to be better quality <laughs> players you're bringing in." Sibo nah. was in the stands last night. I know I seen that. Did I go to him with the Was he the man in the the green hoodie in that? I think it was. Because mm-hmm. uh, it's pure weird, but because I seen a tweet as well talking about the Baldy. like the cultural significance. Uh, it's crazy. Philip Sebo, like w- when did he play for Rangers? Two thousand six. I'm not under the Gwen, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. But like I, I barely watched football I, I back didn't then. Know I, I see. I genuinely, I shit you not. Um, when we used to play football as kids, around at the we called it the horseshoe. We'd play around at the horseshoe and everybody would... Obviously, there was people a wee bit older than mm-hmm. us. But see, Bo, see, and you join in. Mm-hmm. And they fucking I didn't know it was a meant. player until <laughs> years later. I thought it was just people like... A word that I was never familiar with. I thought it was slang. And, and then years later, I was like, oh, there's a story behind that. <laughs> Philip Sebo, ah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, but you know, you're right, because the more money you spend, the likelier the better player you're going to get. And it's mm-hmm. proven by the flesh of, of Arnold Angles. Hopefully, yeah, when we do end up selling players down the line, we can just keep that sort of model Aye. up. Because, as we said, it's a no-brainer. And you, the proof of what, what the money can bring in was there to be seen last night, but yep. obviously there was a lot of other players in the park that helped contribute to what was a, an amazing performance. And of course. I mean, we could talk about <laughs> Dyson Maeda. <laughs> Just it, never ends, does it? It's mental. Like, 99 stamina. <laughs> <laughs> a 99's an understatement. That's unlimited fucking stamina. Maeda's another one who's taken loads. I mean, he, he deserves all the love in the world of that guy because he's... And I, I, I will die in the hill. He's just like... He might not be the best player in the world. We know that because we see that last night. Mm. Right, he scored brilliant goal, brilliant finish. But then, uh, what is it? Goes up the park five minutes later or something, and he, he tries to cross it and it goes flying mm. into the stands. That's where dies. Ah, like, welcome back, dies. But you cannot fault <laughs> no. anything because yeah, he's, he's just tries like, so hard. Everybody always focuses on his work rate, and I feel like that is obviously the main point you need to talk about. But I think. I mean, he's obviously got the, the odd silly wee thing in him like that cross, but technically, like, technically he is. He's not a bad player. I think mm. when he first came in, there was the sort of jokes about, oh, Christ, Aye. he's a bit of a donkey, uh-huh. isn't he? But I think he's changed. I think uh, he's improved. Uh, like, uh, you can see the, the improvement in him since he came in, approaching, what, three years ago? So, it, he's he's going to go down as a, a cult hero at Celtic anyway. I think the lot, the lot of them uh, will, but he's just, he's a workhorse. He is. I mean, he got one of the goals. I was going to run through the scorers, just a reminder to everyone, in ca- or in case for some reason you didn't watch it. <laughs> uh, Kyogo obviously got the first and the second half. Engels with the penalty, Maida, and then Bagida gets his self cooking as well. He needed that. He needed that. He needed, and it was once again cracking goal. Mm-hmm. Like, Took it so well. The but the ball through Forest as well. But. Uh, exactly. I mean, Kun was the same with Kyogo's goal. The work that Kun does to get the ball in mm-hmm. for Kyogo, brilliant. The work that Forrest, as you said, everybody was just... You can't... I, I generally couldn't fault anybody last uh, night. Everybody yeah. was on it. To a man. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. 
Um, and people will, will try and nitpick it 100% because there always is at least a couple, but I, I generally couldn't think of, um, of anything to nitpick about. I mean, we've already <laughs> nitpicked about <laughs> Kyogo's <laughs> missed chances, but... We made up for it, you know, I'm not going to let him off. Um, but, like, I mean, like, you know, the ones that are, like, still not good enough. We've done the bare minimum. I've seen a couple. Really? I've seen a couple. That's why. Yeah, but they they must be... I'll refrain from using the, the full, you know, putting a lighter at the front, but undercover, you know what I mean? Mm. They're definitely undercover. Um, but, I, listen, it, it just, just feels great to have a Champions League night like that at Park Cape, doesn't it? I know. Because it usually... You get excited for the Champions League and then, I mean, there's still plenty of games to go oh, that could ruin this, <laughs> ruin this buzz, but... Second in the group, but mm-hmm. it stands, which is just nuts. <laughs> Rogers, he is David Brent. And <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about this, I'm glad that you brought it up. How fucking funny is that? <laughs> it's the fact that in the room laugh. Why does Nabedy laugh? Know, usually he has a good laugh with all the journalists. I know. Maybe, maybe there was too many of the foreign press in that just, uh, they don't get the humour. <laughs> well, that's the only thing I can think of is like, you know, people that aren't really familiar with Rodgers or maybe, as you said, foreign press because it's the Champions League. I was pissing myself. <laughs> and I would have been if I was there. He was pissing his cell anyway. He was, uh, he was like, I'm ready to get you up at the, the back. guy, I'm telling you, he needs a stand named. I want a statue of him and I, I just, I love him. I love my fucking bits, man. Um, I, anything that you want to add in about last night at all? Um, even on the atmosphere as well, like, I feel like a lot of the games can go quite flat, but I think it helps as well in a game like that. It's, I thought it was weird as well because the place was bouncing, but it's because we're in a Champions League game and we had a consistent, like, run of events that actually led the atmosphere to be better, goal after goal, how rare is that in Aye. the Champions League? So I mean, We heard Peter Schmeichel. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was very vocal about the atmosphere down at City last mm-hmm. night, so hopefully we see him at part of the game. I know, I've seen he was uh, appealing to his producer to send them to Dortmund. Dortmund, aye. aye. What a guy, best keeper of all time, so... Um, it's good to see he's he's looking to join the cell, like the, the green wall as he called it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I can't. I'm, I'm already, but look, listen, we might get our dreams crushed on October first. We might be brought back down to earth, mm-hmm. but I am just buzzing for it. I really am. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, that's exactly what you needed. Something to set you off in the right direction, give you a bit of hope. I mean, obviously Dortmund were pretty good Hi. last night, weren't they? Started our season pretty well. Mm-hmm. Did well. that boy get a hat-trick that final game? I think. He definitely scored two. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I can't remember. Let's see. Because they won 3-0, didn't they? They did. Let me see. Did he get his hat-trick? Dortmund 3. No, it was uh, Gerasi that scored ah. the third. Or Gerasi, I can't but, remember. I mean, we, we do realise that it's not going to be the same sort of thing as last night in the Dortmund game, but all you need is a wee bit of hope. Because if, if we say, for say, Drew or lost that game last night, you'd be absolute dreading Dortmund. Yeah. But you now you've got the maybe misplaced excitement for it and optimism, but like, who's going to try and rain on your parade after a night exactly. like last night? Should we, let's do a wee bit of, to end off the opening segment of the show then, let's do a wee bit of kind of foreshadowing and looking at how all of our opponents done very quickly. So we've just spoke about Dortmund who opened up brilliantly. They, they won 3-0 uh, at Bruges, um, which takes us on to Bruges, who are one of our opponents. They are... Not till match day four, mm-hmm. uh, match day four uh, at Celtic Park, but a winnable game again. Mm-hmm. Um, we need we need to win the home games. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. At Atlanta, who ha- have not tonight. opened. Yep, they're tonight, so we can't really comment on at Atlanta. Leipzig play the night as well against Leipzig the tonight. Zagreb obviously <laughs> on the end day uh, a nine two defeat that cost the manager his job. Did he get sacked? Mm-hmm. And they see that. Wow. I, 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 I seen it like I think Celtic way down an article on it, but mutual uh, termination I wow. think. But League and Cup double last year. I don't know if they've started poorly in. Let's see because the league like, or no. Let's see. They are currently third in the league, but it's not a bad record. It's four wins, a draw, and a loss to open the mm. season. Um, so maybe it's just you know, maybe it's too late. They have got they've got a lad in their team. He's called Martin uh, Baturina. Ryan, I know, I play career mode. <laughs> <and> shit, oh. <laughs> I've got my AC Milan and football manager. <laughs> Fucking unreal, by the way, unreal. Um, so, yeah, Zagreb, once again, I know it's away, but watching that, you're like, oh, what the fuck, so you're, oh, you're hoping they win. Young boys who were battered. Have you seen the highlights of that game? No. Nah. If we do not beat young boys, I will be so sad. But they are, they are bad, man. Well, they were against Villa. But it wasn't even like Villa were that good. They were good, but mm-hmm. oh, some of the 
highlights on young boys part oh my heavens god almighty it was like watching us in aye. Europe historically and you years know gone by I mistake 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 one of the goals they conceded is comical so you know, Craig Gordon and goals it, you'd think so I and then <laughs> the Swiss Craig Gordon <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously to finish off we've got Villa who you know is one of the tougher mm-hmm. games one of the toughest games um so yeah, I'm looking forward to these last few games. Last few games? Uh, just the seven to go, Ryan. <laughs> the, the remaining games. Uh, so let us know what you think in the comments below. Right, half time. Uh, what are we in? What are we in? I think about half an hour. I think we might be about half an hour. about that, Mark. Well, we'll see. If stopwatch Kieran is right. <laughs> so for today, we've got a Celtic tenable, as we know. It's here we go, tenable. So is it just me? You're playing it all fat. You're playing it like the show. Do I get like an extra life? We'll give you four lives. Four. Four. Well, we Generous. usually three, innit? Mm-hmm. So we'll give you four. Um, or or I'll, I'll give you the option. Do you want four lives or three lives and a very telling clue? I'll take the three and a very telling clue. Right, he's taking three and a very telling clue. Anyway, uh, Kieran, our quiz master, said this could be done in record time. But Does he know it's just I don't me? Know he, I don't know when he said that. I don't know if he knew it was just you, so it might not be record time. Anyway, you're tenable for today, Kieran. I feel like Warwick Davis, but five foot taller. <laughs> um, the last ten European group stage slash knockout games Celtic have played in where at least four goals were scored and both teams have scored. Qualifiers not included, of course. So mm. there you go. The last... 10 European games where there's been four goals scored and both teams have scored. Right, is this including? Includes last night. Aye, so, so there you go, you've got your first one. Bratislava. Yes, Celtic 5, Slovan, Bratislava. How many goals one. did you say? Four or more? Four or more and right, both, and teams, both teams, teams to score. score. We scored one number for So Sunday. I'll just tell you straight, just to make it clear for people playing at home, last year, Atletico Madrid 6, Celtic 0 is not tenable. Uh, then you've got Real Madrid at the Bernabeu. That is number three number on the three. list. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, Real Madrid five, Celtic one. Mm-hmm. Uh, who did we put last year? Last year, Atletico. Uh, well, Atletico at home, the two each draw. Correct. Celtic two, Atletico Madrid two. That's you got the top three. Uh, three one defeat against Leipzig. Correct. Uh, number four, Leipzig three, Celtic one. Uh, Remember, this is not just Champions League as well. As mm-hmm. No, no, I'm working my way, try to work my way back through the seasons here. Um, so then before that game, we played Leipzig. No, we played... Who did we have? Real Madrid. Uh, we drew with Shakhtar. Wasn't that high... Sc- what was this called in the Bodo game, actually? Wasn't he 3-1, Minton? Or? At Celtic Park. Correct. Aye. It is Celtic one, Bodo Glimt three. That's number five uh, on the list. Real Betis in the last game of the Europa. Group yes, stage. Celtic three, Betis two. Leverkusen away. Yes, Leverkusen three, Celtic two. That's number seven. You've got three left. Betis away. That's number nine. So Betis Which four, Celtic three. There's one in between mm-hmm. Betis and Leverkusen. Leverkusen. Oh, eh. Uh, Ferenc Faros away. Yes, that's correct. Do you mm. know the score? 3 2. Correct. Shot has scored that belt of post none. Which means this is record time, by the way. <laughs> Fuck you now. Which means there's one more. One more? One more. You're on the last one. Uh, and you've got three lives and a very telling clue. I've tried not to use any of them. <laughs> <laughs> right, so if that was the 21 22 season, the qualifiers for that. Was AZ Alkmaar at home, which was only like two 0 It was like one each away or something. Uh, Mitchelland, one each at home. Oh, yeah, one each away. Not including qualifiers. Oh, I thought you said it was including no, not including qualifiers. Oh, right, right, not yeah, including fine. qualifiers. Uh, I'll, I'll not take a light or, light or life off you for that. Ooh, oh. Lille at home. Correct, it is. It's Celtic 3, Lille 2 in the COVID I tried to season. wipe that game from my memory. I would have been here for eternity before I got that game. I've just wiped that whole group stage in mm. my head. I've I, I, I seen a couple of the was game AC, at San Siro. Lille and... AC, Lille and Sparta, Frag, who absolutely hammered us. That's right. Oh, one in home That's and right. away. But Sorrow was good. Oh, aye. But Sorrow was good. Sorrow. Um, yeah, 
Uh, talking about the Champions League, I forgot there's early games on tonight. Mm-hmm. Leverkusen are now forty and Vox has scored already. Wait, how many minutes in? Five minutes in. Christ. Best be a good game as well. Best player in Europe, mate. I'm telling you, Florian and Vox, best player in Europe. Unbelievable. Right, okay, half time is done. Uh, which means we can spend a little bit of time, I guess, talking about Falkirk at the weekend. What a fall from grace. I know. <laughs> Falkirk I just hate a Sunday game. What is that about? What, like, what time is kick-off? Three o'clock, to be fair, so it's no a, a half four taking the piss. Imagine, <laughs> imagine we got hit with the eight o'clock on a Sunday the that's way they, they need to play. That's disgusting. That, should be, that shouldn't be allowed. It should be illegal. It should. It's the Lord's Day. I could stay that's having a day. I don't care. <laughs> um, so we do take on Falkirk. Listen... Look, I've been speaking about this in my live stream. Falkirk right now are arguably better than a few of the teams at the bottom end of our division. Mm. They're flying. They could come up this year. So it's not a game to sleep on, Keir. It's definitely a challenge. And I don't think it's one that Rodgers will let the players be complacent about. I think the main question that gets raised, I think, for me, going into the game on Sunday, is there's been a lot of talk. We'll see Alex Barry playing. Mm. We'll see Trusty. We'll see uh, Villamis and mm. Sal. Do you, do you swap the entire team about like that? Oh, sorry, everybody. I just <laughs> just not to make into next week. But I don't think we... I mean, I, I do want to see other players get minutes, but mm-hmm. do you think it's going to be this massive changeover no. that some people seem no. to think it is? We spoke about this on one of my live streams the other night, so people will know my opinions uh, if they watched it. I, I don't think it will be. I don't think Rodgers has any reason to do it. It would be different if we were playing Peter Heed. Mm-hmm. Um Falkirk are, are a team who are going to come to Celtic Park with all intentions of giving us a game. I don't think that we should necessarily disregard these players and say, oh, they shouldn't be given minutes. Obviously, I want to see them get minutes, mm-hmm. but Rodgers won't just go and shake up the team no. needlessly. I think he's probably got last season and he's as well. I'm not saying he pure changed the team up, but we're now at the quarterfinal stage, uh, potentially uh, the first trophy up for yep. grabs. I don't think any gamble is going to be taken, especially what's on the line this season, Talkie trophy halls now, I'm, I'm not saying that's on his mind uh-huh. but I don't think any unnecessary gambles get taken I, I, I reckon there'll be a couple of changes but I think there's a very fine line between implementing a few players that won't yeah. really disrupt the flow of the team because why would you want to disrupt this this run we're on now yep. but I think you can sort of get players involved but I don't think for example we're going to see Greg Taylor dropped Liam Scales or Carter Vickers dropped as well as I mean, let's just say, like, Schmeichel, who would drop it in the midfield for McEwen, things like that. Aye. I think there'll be a couple of changes, but I don't think it's going to be this, like, Palmas starting over other people. I like. think that, you know, listen, if Celtic were to go out, and I don't think it will necessarily be the case, but if Celtic were to go out and go into half-time, 3 nil up, that opens the door for him to bring on players a lot earlier than he normally would. Because mm-hmm. we know Rodgers leaves his subs a little bit later, mm-hmm. 70 minutes, maybe, maybe rather than the 60-minute mark. So I think they know maybe if we're three 0 up at half time, yeah, then you've got the chance to go right, McCowan, Bally, Trusty, get on, ease them into the team rather than just going right, go out there and ex- get me to the semi finals. Mm-hmm. And you brought up a great point, you know, yeah, the trophy halls might not be on the manager's mind, but I tell you what is the ego because mm-hmm. Rogers is a fucking egomaniac, and he knows that there's a treble on the line here, and also after last night's performance, a really good opportunity of doing something in Europe. If he can end this season with a treble and maybe taking us to somehow just, just talking sake gets us to a last 16 what a fucking what that mm-hmm. on his CV that looks fucking incredible mm-hmm. so he's going to be thinking about things like that I know it's the, I feel like there's too much on the line as I said to gamble with it I think it, it's a game that I don't think we're going to be taking lightly uh, and Volker could be right up for it as well because they, they're a game away from Hamden they've got a real feel good factor around the club now. they'll probably have a I, I think they'll sell out their away end. You'd expect them to in the form they're in. Mm-hmm. Maybe not a couple of years ago, but uh, now. Like, I feel like the fans are coming back now. It's, it's gone better. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, I mean, that's the case everywhere. Uh, but, nah, I think it, I'm dreading Sunday because I know I'm going to be rough for the, <laughs> the horse racing, but I'll be there and I'll power through it. You will. You'll not be like me at Livingston in the quarterfinal last year. I had year. to sit there myself. Uh, I was ill, man. I was ill. It was my birthday night out. <laughs> I'm not at the races, so I'll definitely be there this weekend. Um, yeah, I, I would be surprised if there's big, big changes. I think that he'll maybe dot one or two mm-hmm. in at most, but leave it at that. We're not going to see this full. People are, I've seen some of my comments given it. Like, this was one of the teams I seen suggested. It was, so it was like, Sinsalo in goals, Ralston right back, Trusty in 
Because they have a backup set. A Welsh at centre back. Valley at left back. McEwen, eh, McEwen, Bernardo, and Holm in a front three like Forrest, Ida, and I mean, what, what, what world would the, would the manager do that? That's that's um, <laughs> even though it's just hi- hypothetical, has given me the fear a wee bit. Like, <laughs> like why? Who? That, that like, is genuinely that's like doing like football I, manager. I, I was going to say, I feel like I've spoken about career mod quite a lot, but that's like you go through the team, you, you're resting it before a big Champions League game or something. You just press triangle <laughs> or Y, and you, you just see the first available player so just swap them straight out. It's like we're not even playing midweek next week, so there's no mm-hmm. you know, players are going to get a week's so rest. I suppose the only thing we're talking about no changing up and that, but. It, then you've got the question of when will we see these players? Yeah, and that, then an are you point. left the rest of the season saying that's not the right time? It's not the right time. Well, like this probably is the right time if uh, you want yeah. to swap it, but I just still don't really like to disrupt no, the way I we're know. playing. Then it's a horrible. Listen, the time will come for each of them. Mm-hmm. Like somebody's going to get injured at some point, or somebody's got. I, mean, I don't want them, but you know what uh, I mean. Somebody's, I know, that's it's, ine- it's inevitable. Somebody's going to get injured. Somebody's going to drop out. Trust they'll have his moments. The one that I really feel for is maybe Sin Salo because I'm like, when does he genuinely mm-hmm. get time? But, you know, he's he's young. Um, he's got a, a long career ahead of he's him. He's only about 22, 22. 22. Kasper Schmeichel's gone in 40. You know, he's got an 18-year career potentially ahead of him. Kasper Schmeichel's belly, man. <laughs> ah, what a wee fat man. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it, listen, the team for me, I think... I, I, there's no point of us doing a team prediction, I don't nah. think, for the cup. But I, I think if I was to pre- predict any changes, I think the big one I think is I, I could maybe see Bernardo starting. Um, and genuinely, I think that might be it. I think apart from that, he plays the same team. I think Bernardo's the only one that maybe comes in. I reckon. I think there'll be two changes. I, I think he's. I'm assuming it's one Bernardo. AI. Aye, but aye. I, I don't know. I've just got a feeling he's going to throw maybe Guy Gregg or a rest and throw so Bally in because I'm out. When else does he? Taylor has played a lot of football, mm. to be fair. He's played a lot of football. Um, and he did drop at the Scotland team with a knock as well, mm-hmm. didn't he? So maybe a rest could. He's also got the new Barnet to think about. The new Barnet. <laughs> big, big talking point. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I will see what the team is. But listen, at the end of the day, expectations win. I know, it has to be, no, it has to be a win. Get, get us to Hamden. Aye, it's not. It's not. It's not like last season. I can't believe when I think back, I went to Hamden once last season. Mm-hmm. Once. I'm used to going to Hamden four times a fucking year. You spoiled new generation. <laughs> once I went last year because I didn't get a ticket for the final. Mm-hmm. Fucking horrible. Horrible. Um, but we'll be there. We'll be there. Uh, do you want a gear score prediction? Um, I want 3 now on a lot. A clean sheet would be nice and. I mean, if there is any changes, 3 now would still be a good result to keep the momentum going, so I'll, I'll say 3. Nice. Um, well, that's, that's pretty much the fall cup game done mm-hmm. and dusted, which can take us on to the last segment, because we've got no quiz today, so, I, well, I mean... Hardly we've got a quiz, but... We're not going to be able to play each other <laughs> and read the answers out somehow. Um, what, but what I will ask, Kieran, is I'm still... What's your, your Kieran's cup and corner? Uh, well, I mean, I actually had one or two people message me y- <laughs> yesterday uh, with the, the winning bets with Vladimir Weiss oh. getting booked. I'm like, oh, that's brilliant. Mine did not come in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I had Vladimir Weiss to get booked, which happened really early in the game, didn't it? it? Did, but did. him to get booked, Engels to score because I said I had a feeling we were going to get a penalty. Aye. And then I picked Greg Taylor to get booked. So that's why I want him dropped at the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck him. I picked the rang fullback. Is either going to be Taylor or Arthur Johnson? Aye. I went Taylor. My dick. You got anything planned for the weekend? I know you're cutting corners on horses this weekend, actually. I know. I'm going to be frittering my money on. Because there's a couple of big games. I mean, Newcastle play City, uh, Tottenham, Man United. You know, it's got a big game. Who do Newcastle play? Rangers, Hibs. There's a card fest. Mm. There's a card fest. What did you say who the Newcastle play? Mm. Man City. Is that when they set up play Arsenal? Oh shit! Sorry, I'm lo- I'm looking at the wrong weekend. My fucking bad. I'm terrible for that. I uh, I was on next weekend because mm. I was like, I've said we're playing midweek. So this weekend, actually, what we've got is take back Rangers don't play Hibs this weekend. So ignore me. Uh, it's Dundee. a couple, obviously. Yeah. So Celtic, Falkirk, Rangers, Dundee, uh, uh, Man City, Arsenal, of course. Um, what else is in England? West Ham, Chelsea, Palace, United, Liverpool, Bournemouth. So, I feel like it's a hard one this weekend to try and give a prediction for a Cooten, but I don't know. Luke McCowney's score. There you go. You've heard it here. Luke McCowney's score. 
And um, me to lose all my money at the races. You, <laughs> Back that. Does any but did Falkirk have any ex, you know? Does Aiden Nesbitt play for Hingy? Play the one that played through oh, the Oh, he might, academy? he might. I was talking about ex. Oh, ex Rangers. Rangers, I was going to say. Probably, say, aye. F- Falkirk are one of the teams that on Fort Mob, they actually don't. Oh, well, aye, they do. They have a. Uh, none that are recognising are starting 11. Oh, Calvin Miller plays for Falkirk. Fuck's who does. Ah, Calvin Miller's there. I'll have the tattoo of it. Aye, I don't know if it, it's the kind of players that if they played for Rangers, it would have been long before they mm-hmm. made it, you know. Um, so, aye, anyway, there's Cairns Coupon Corner on the county score. Right, uh, Twitter Q&A to finish off today's episode uh, before we record a, a quick Thunder Club. Um, I need to get the tweet up. Have you got anything you want to throw in while I find the tweet? Um, and ha- interesting happening. I don't know if anything interesting is happening. I mean... I've got the tweet anyway. Nah? Nah. This week just been working and prison break still going well. Hey, I am going to actually be going home to watch it. So night and watching prison. I'm going to go and continue heels for all the wrestling fans out there. That's what I'm on the now. Right, twelve questions. Uh, let's get going. Adam starts us off, of course, with a kebab pie question as always. He says, "Do you think Bratislava do Slovakian kebab pies over there?" Um, and he's asked, "Are we going to Dortmund?" He's moist for currywursts and steins. Uh, well, I would like to hope that the. The Slovakians have got a, a variation on the kebab pie, but their pals went to Bratislava and they said the palate was not great. Oh no, uh, I, I don't really have much hope for the cuisine of Eastern European countries. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know people slag the food here, but mm. it's just fucking stew and sausage, uh, isn't it? Yeah, it's and some good. variation of grilled no, meat. No breakfasts are never. Good. Honestly, I, I, mean, I mean this with all due respect. Listen, there's probably some great foods that I've not tried in Eastern Europe, but their breakfasts are abhorrent. I mean, we were in Montenegro mm-hmm. the first morning, rough as fuck after that that flight we were drinking on to <laughs> Podgenita, whatever, whatever it's called, and the next morning we just got slapped with a menu in the English one, oh, this is not a touristy place. I just tried looking for ham and eggs. Ah, uh, well, you know, go gammon eggs oh. and chips, <laughs> but oh, I've I, I, I wish you could just put up the photo on the screen. Eh? I know, I know. I, 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 it that's was, a TikTok. <laughs> it was horrific, man. Megan. The, the best part of my breakfast was my Marlboro Gold. Oh. Quite genuine. I was actually, I was real rough as well, and the only thing we could, like, translate over was, like, Coca-Cola. Uh, so yeah. I'm sitting in Washington, this disgusting breakfast with <laughs> a full fat Coke, man. <laughs> Teeth were wearing a full Jake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we're not going to Dortmund, sadly, Adam. Nah. No, sadly not. We'd love to, but it's love just... To. A waste into yeah. no got a ticket. Cal is in as always saying we've spent five million pounds plus on three players this summer. Engels Ida and Trusty, and it's paying off so far. Do you think we've made a turning point in transfer? Well, we kind of touched on mm. this, yeah. Will we see more of these types of signings in the next few years? You'd like to think so, hopefully. It's not the you you want the good examples of this because you see players that we sign for big money and they do well, obviously. I think people Probably the board are probably scared off of the, the past horror stories. Uh, Albion a Yeti mm-hmm. and Vasilis Barkas has been these big money transfers in the summer that just did not work out. But if you'd done that, you'd never sign anybody again for more than a couple million pounds. So yeah, exactly. you need to take these risks. It is. It's all about risks in football. Everything's a risk in mm-hmm. football. So like the price tag really, you know, obviously determines how big the risk is, but it shouldn't throw you off. And I hope it doesn't throw Celtic off in, in the coming years. I don't think it will. Hopefully not. Uh, Mark McQueen saying, is it time to get really carried away with Brendan Rodgers' Celtic team and consider ourselves a real force in this season's Champions League? Yes. I thought you would say yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Anything Rodgers stamped has got my approval. I'm getting carried away. I don't care. Ah, oh, fuck it. <laughs> fuck it. Uh, Dylan says, score predictions for the final. I'm thinking 2-1 Celtic. <laughs> well, as against Bayern. <laughs> the own home patch. That's, it's nuts because the final is a, in Munich, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. in the Allianz. Um, the last final there was fucking brilliant. Chelsea One against Chelsea. Brilliant final. Brilliant final. Because I mean, it was a shame watching Chelsea win, mm-hmm. but it was a brilliant final. Um, Greg and Dyson, enthusiast with Engels playing well so far. Do you think there's a chance we only keep him for a season if he has a good Champions League campaign? Fucking up, no. <laughs> well, Celtic have been ruthless with these new contracts, and if Engels plays, the listen, he won't be. F- There's nothing saying that he won't get a new contract next season mm-hmm. if he keeps playing Aye. the way he's playing. You know, um, that's very possible. 
I know, I don't think it's out the the question, but hopefully, I mean, I think if you do get a, a pretty special player at Celtic, you, you'd like to think you've got them at least for two seasons. I mean, with Jota, we only had them for one technically as a permanent Celtic player, but I mean, for what we're seeing so far, it, it looks like it could be fitting the bill of a previous sort of yeah. profile of player that goes for big money. And I mean, you would think he would at 21 years of age. And signed for eleven million. Mm. Like you just, you're hoping when you're putting this money out, you just keep increasing what the yeah. record is you're selling these players for. Uh, where was next? Is it time to book, book plane tickets from Munich? Says Adam. Everybody's, everybody's feeling it, man. I see, I see we did a, uh, what's it called? Simon Wilson buy a banged up motor and drive. See, I like the Thunder, like Ford Escort. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need. Um, how much would uh, Nathan asks? How much would you buy the Dyson mining training Dyson Mida training and diet plan for? Uh, I'm not buying anything for that. I'm not, I don't my exercise heart, normally. My heart would explode. Oh, <laughs> Quite frankly, I'd explode just reading. <laughs> uh, Aiden says, "What does this season's team need to achieve to be considered the best team since the O'Neill slash Strachan era?" I think you need to go on a run. I, I think that more than that, I think that. That the man, sorry, I'm rubbing my eyes. I feel tired. Um, I I I think that demands more than the answer about this season. I think to, to achieve that status, it doesn't happen in a single year. No, I think it happens over the course of a couple. Mm-hmm. Personally, I'd, I'd agree with that. But if you're just thinking about this season as a singular, then I mean, I know it's the Champions League, and we made it to the the final of the UEFA Cup. But to try and emulate that, you need to get through a knockout round yeah. or two. I'd imagine. And hopefully they can. Hopefully. Just, just that's how nice the draw is to you, really. Aye. Uh, is Arnie Engels him, says Jamesy? I believe so. He may be. He may be him. See, on the last point, actually, see, just before we go any further with the questions, mm-hmm. see how it's split through, obviously, the tap eight hanging, but then it's 90 to 24. Yes. How is that seeded? I, is I, it a I, random I, I draw? I, or I is genuinely it? don't think that is. If, if I'm correct and a football manager's correct which it usually is I think that it, you could finish ninth and play who finished 10th or you Aye, it's just a random draw because yeah, I wasn't I sure if it was so, like, like you know top. how like in the playoffs and that in England and you know, like second I generally can't play, mind I generally can't that. mind so that's one thing I've noticed somebody asked me that it yesterday. might be because it might be it might be like the top 8 play the bottom 8 I like you get drawn for uh-huh. somebody it might be I just I can't know. mind so I don't want to give a definitive answer somebody mm-hmm. will tell us in the comments Um. Billy says Reckon McCowan went for a McDonald's After the game last night <laughs> Just spot him in the drive <laughs> <laughs> Right look <laughs> That's not the Dyson Maida training plan <laughs> um, Engels is so fucking good Says Paolo Bernardo, eh, Bernardo boy um, Scott says Which player has the best social media captions And why is it Dyson Maida I feel like I don't really see An awful lot of them I, I don't either uh, um, I follow some of them but on like Instagram, for aye, example. Aye. But Midas is always like, what was his last night? It was like, uh, I promise I'll, I'll, I'll keep, keep running, running for, for the team or something. Should run for president. <laughs> uh, Liam, your biggest fan, uh, Liam McPhee has said, well, Kieran, what a night, eh? All I've got to say is love yous. Cheers. Yous this time. We're all feeling yeah, He's warming up to you. We're all feeling the love. Thank you, Liam. We love you back. We love you back. Uh, CB17, who was your man of the match last night? I feel like it could have went to so many people. Yeah, I mean, Liam Scales obviously did deserve it, but yeah. you could you could say Engels, you could say Dyson as well. So if I was to pick somebody else, I'd probably just go Engels. Uh, I'd probably agree. I mean, go oh, go and assist. Maybe Maida, Maida or Engels. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's him only the second ever yep. Celtic player to get a goal and an assist in that's the same nuts. Champions League game. That is nuts. He's in esteemed company. Who is it? Henry Larson. Of course. Um, this is a one that we never really get asked too many music questions, surprisingly. Someone's asked album of the year, and I, I've actually been waiting for this question. Really? Mm-hmm. Have you got an answer? That's on you go. Um, it's, I need to go check my Spotify. It's, it's for that band I told Mark and all that about. Uh, they're called Dog Park. All right. And I think they're for the state of New York. But it's, I think the album itself is called Breaking in Brooklyn. It's like if you like your sort of indie stuff, then it's definitely that's my album of the year personally. Breaking in Brooklyn, it's an EP, okay. but I'll, I'll say that. Um, oh, 
I, I think my album of the year's yet to come because I have a good feeling it might be Gary by Blossoms. I think that could be it. Um, but obviously it's not out for another... I think it's out like next week. Um, so it, it, it might be that when it's out. It, pfft, see, I, it's, it, I've not listened to a lot of like albums that aren't like my favourite people. Like Luke Combs obviously done a new album this year. He's, mm-hmm. he's, he's kind of father and son uh, piece. And it was really good. I like that. Brooks and Dunn are releasing an album this year as well, but it's just a, a cover album. Um, I can't really think of any like, albums that have came out for big See, artists. I, I, I I, because like all my favourite artists have not released, like Red Hot Chili Peppers done music the last couple of years, they've not mm-hmm. done any this year. Um, try to think who else. You know, in 1975, I'll really like them for people who don't know. They've not done anything this year. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if I have an album in a year. As I said, I think it's coming. I think it's maybe Gary. I, I, don't, I feel like I've been listening to pure throwback tunes all year. I'm actually dreading. I was we're talking about this. I'm dreading Spotify Rats because it's going to be fucking embarrassing. Aye. See, I, I'm an, like, let's listen, at the end of the day, and, and you know this, obviously, I'm an, I'm an oldies man. I'm a, I, I live in the 60s. So, in 60s in country music for me. So, you know, I don't listen to a lot of modern albums, really. Um, I think people always expect, like, I'll tell you what's no album of the year. Fuck that, Sabrina Carpenter. Why? Just. Something fishy there, mate. <laughs> Something fishy. Something fishy. How is she? How that rise is not natural. I don't. I. I'm not trying to be a conspiracy theorist. But I mean, it's, it's just a pure classic formula. Just, former Disney. To I know. I know. But like, this is this is like seismic. Fucking like she's just appeared. Like I knew she existed. Right. I and never knew she existed until about a year ago. And, and it's been seismic. Like it's been poof. Mm. Like at least Ariana Grande was like you know she was she was like kind of you know. And I came through. I feel, like it, I feel like it just feels like that because it happened Maybe. the same for me. Like Maybe. I, was, I, f- I mean, like three years ago, I was like, "Who the fuck is Olivia Rodrigo?" Uh, and true. then she just pure blew up. True. Industry points. Okay, it's just terrible music, though. So I mean, it's, it's, it's catchy music, but shite catchy music. Anyway. We'll maybe cover something like that on this, the Thunder Club. Uh, let's, we've only got a couple more to get to batter through. So, uh, when's the statue of Ralston laying bricks getting built outside Park Heed? Hell phrases over. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you want to play in the Champions League final, Kieran? Says Gabe. Um, that was Slitzlova and Bratislava. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> uh, realistically, I'll take, I'd be happy with young boys. <laughs> I'd take them. Um, <clears throat> what did you have for dinner last night? Says Celtic Centre. Well, I mean... Oh, a kebab pie. <laughs> ah, kebab pie was the and dinner. And then I don't have kebab pot noodle when I go in. I can't believe that's a thing. Revolting. Don't have it. Terrible. Uh, before I came out yesterday, I had like, the cheesy tater talk. That's right. that. And then a kebab pie. Quite a varied, varied dinner. Are you partial to a pizza crunch, says Jack Daly. See, I, I always make the point. Pizza for the chippy, like the fried pizza is good. I think a pizza crunch is a step too far. It's nice, but... I don't remember the last time I had one and never suffered chest pains after it. No. <laughs> and then the last one for today, um, and I'll answer this very quickly, even though I did kind of touch on it at the start. Kieran asking, when does a new member get announced? We will have one of our new members on next week. Um, and we might have to, I, I've still to make a, a final decision sort of thing, um, because I would really like to give an opportunity to maybe somebody currently studying because we get press opportunities and stuff like that and we can't always I make know, it working or you're working or I'm recording or I'm busy or whatnot. So um we we're we've yet to make the final decision on how many exactly but one of them will definitely be here next week. Uh so yeah. Right, that's, that's us for this part. I was I think that might be the first time we've done a show in under an hour and I think it's about fifty seven Run about well, that mark. Well, for, see, <laughs> well, it's over. And, and just, I, need, I need to take into yeah, account the, the G4 claims stuff at the start. But aye, so. aye, exactly, because that obviously plays a part. I think that's like, what, 40, 50 seconds worth mm. of, you know. Anyway, uh, thank you, Kieran, for joining me uh, for the first one, one-on-one type interview. <laughs> and of you. <laughs> must have some stories, eh? <laughs> <laughs> must have some stories. I've been sitting oh, like no, that. No, McGregor soon, eh? Oh, and that God. oh, we didn't even talk. We could even talk about that in Thunder Club. I've not seen it. I can't talk about it. So, That's um, good. anyway, thank you for tuning in. Remember, if you're a member, you can tune into the Thunder Club for the next kind of 20, 10, 20, 30 minutes, however long it lasts. And uh, thank you and see you next week. Cheerio.